I'm going to cut right to the chase. This is one of the scariest stories that I've ever heard. It was sent to me two years ago by somebody named Gemini24, and they have since deleted their Reddit account, and I have no idea what became of them. I have featured this story a few times since I started my YouTube career, and it is still hands down the scariest I have ever heard. I thought that it deserved its own video. I hope you enjoy. I'm 28 years old, and this is the first time I have thought about this incident in detail because of how traumatizing it was. I met my ex-girlfriend in California in 2010. We had both lived there our whole lives, but decided to move to Maine a couple years after we started dating. She had flown to Maine on a business trip in 2012 and fell in love with everything about it. The small towns, the scenery, and the people. She came home and convinced me to pack up our whole lives and move there. And so we did. We saved up a bunch of money and rented a huge moving truck. The plan was for me to drive the moving truck across the country while she stayed behind three days to finish her classes at the local community college, which were due to end at that time. I would have just waited until her classes were finished, but we decided to take advantage of an incredibly good deal that we were offered from the company who provided the moving truck. She had a car that she had to drive there anyways, while I towed my car behind the moving truck. My brother came with me on the trip, helping me drive. The drive was obviously a very long one, and when my brother and I arrived in Maine, about four days after we had left, we were exhausted. After unloading the truck and sleeping for about 16 hours, we decided to visit the small town of Belfast, which was about 14 miles away from my new house. We ate some seafood at a little family-owned joint, rented a scary movie, and made the drive back to the house. My new house was literally in the middle of nowhere. During the day, the view of the lake in my backyard was amazing. The woods surrounding my house were awesome and everything was really beautiful. At night, it was a different story. The house was incredibly creepy to be in. The whole house was surrounded with windows. You could not see anything looking out those windows at night, but I'm sure that if you were standing outside, you could quite easily see in. My brother had a flight booked back to California the following day and we woke up very early in the morning to drive to Portland, where the airport was. I eventually made it back alone, and wasn't able to make any phone calls or watch any cable TV, because we had no service out there yet, and no cable or internet hooked up. My cell phone did not work anywhere on that property. The only thing I had was a box of DVDs. That was it. When I made it back, I decided to try out my new fishing pole that we had bought in town. I wasn't out at the lake very long, as it started to get dark in Maine very fast in the fall. I went back to the house and sat in the living room in the chair, looking out the windows at the scenery. My view was getting darker and darker. I turned on all the lights in the house and quickly became creeped out when it became pitch black outside. Imagine being in the middle of the forest in the middle of nowhere at night and looking around. You could not see your own hand if you held it right in front of your face. And when I say it was pitch black, I mean you can't see anything. We hadn't hung up any curtains or blinds yet, and I had the extremely uneasy feeling that somebody was outside the house watching me. Watching me go from room to room. I decided to hang up sheets over all the windows using thumbtacks. I sat on the couch in the living room and put in a funny movie to try and shake the unnerving feeling that I had. It did not work. I eventually realized I had to try to get some sleep, and my eyelids were becoming sore. I was getting very tired. I covered myself with blankets on the couch and turned off the TV. After a few minutes, my eyes had adjusted, and I could see around the living room very slightly. My eyes were very heavy, and I fell asleep. I woke up some time later, and it was still night, and still very dark. I reached for my bottle of coke that I had on the ground in front of me, and took a big gulp. 
I set it back down and looked around the room. Now, I'm having difficulty putting these next emotions into words that I could accurately convey. My heart began to throb when I noticed a man standing in the corner of the room. I couldn't see his eyes, but he had to have been looking at me. I did nothing and said nothing, and not by choice, but because I couldn't. I was frozen. He didn't move, and it was clear that he was trying to not be seen. After a few moments, I did my best to think rationally and logically. I'm not sure that he knew that I had seen him. I had a blanket over me which might have shrouded my face, in which he wouldn't be able to see my eyes. After about a minute of gut-wrenching fear, I somehow decided to do something, and it was the hardest thing that I've ever done. I forced myself to cough. I did it while getting up, in an effort to give him the impression that I didn't know that he was there. I slowly made it to my feet and walked across the icy cold wood flooring to the bathroom around the corner of the living room. He didn't move. I made it into the bathroom and nothing happened. I closed the bathroom door and slowly turned the lock to the upright position. Tears went down my face as I backed up into the bathtub behind me. I was staring at the door. I suddenly realized there was a small window up above the bathtub that I could most likely crawl through. I moved the shower curtain as silently as I could and reached up to the window lock. I unlocked it and tried sliding the window open to the left. The window began to squeak when I pulled it open and I froze, hoping that the man didn't hear it. A couple seconds later, I heard a tapping on the bathroom door. It wasn't a knock, but a tap, and it didn't sound like the tap of a finger. It sounded like metal, like he was tapping a knife against the door. At this point, I made the realization that the man either knew what I was doing or simply wanted me to know that he was outside the door. Adrenaline took over completely and I slid the window open and pushed the screen out onto the ground. I tried not to exert any noise as I jumped up and began squeezing my body through the small window. My head and upper body were out and I could not see inside the bathroom anymore, only the dense, dark woods in front of me. I was pulling my legs through the window when I suddenly felt the man grab my foot. Directly after that, before I could even react, I felt my ankle be sliced open. I let out a noise of shock and surprise as I pulled out of his grasp and fell to the ground. I started heaving and felt as if my heart would explode. I stood up and looked around. I very quickly dashed out into the woods and fell to the ground looking back at the house and the window to the bathroom. I felt my ankle which was throbbing from pain and brought my hand up to reveal it covered in slick blood. The deathly serious situation I was in became real and horrifying. I looked back at the house and suddenly saw the back door fly open. The man ran down the steps and started looking around into the darkness, searching for me. I became a statue on the ground and tried to control my breathing. He had a huge knife in his hand and was wearing all black. He was walking into the woods, but not near where I was laying. He was grunting, and soon after, I lost sight of him. I started frantically looking around, thinking that at any moment he would spot me and stab me to death. I saw nothing but trees and darkness. There was a bit of snow on the ground from a couple days before, and I was freezing and shaking at this point uncontrollably. About ten minutes later, I saw the man walk out of the trees from where he entered and went back inside the house. I laid out there the rest of the night, and luckily, the sun started to rise only about an hour later. After the sun fully illuminated my surroundings, I felt as though the man had probably left, and I felt ready to move. I made it to my feet and walked around the house to the front. I saw that the front door was left wide open. I slowly approached it and looked inside. Nothing. I walked in a few steps and grabbed my car keys that were hanging on a hook by the front door. I ran back to my car and unlocked it, got inside and started the engine. 
I backed out of the long driveway and drove to the little general store a few miles from my house. And this is where the story ends. I got away, and so did the intruder. My ankle was pretty badly cut, but it healed after a few months with no problems. I suffered minor pneumonia from being outside for the time that I had, but nothing too serious became of it. This incident has made sleep very difficult for me, but writing this has oddly enough made me somewhat drowsy. I think maybe I'll try to go to sleep right now. Thanks for listening.